Hey everybody. Uh, so today what I want to do is a video on our log truck. This is a video I've had a lot of requests for. I hope I can cover it thoroughly to where all of you can understand it. Uh, these old side loaders were designed specifically for animal loggers, horses, mules, and whatnot. Uh, and I'm going to try to go into details and show you specifically why uh they were designed for horse and mule loggers and i guess it's more how they were designed for horse and mule loggers uh so y'all be patient with me and uh we'll get it going okay uh many of you have had just tons and tons of questions about this old truck and how it works and the functionality of it and everything so i want to start off with how the truck gets its power how the loader arms work how they get their power okay and it's pretty simple let me see if i can dip y'all right down in here right up there on the back of the transmission if you'll follow that shaft that's right here beside the camera all the way up there's a little pto box on the back of the transmission okay now that PTO shaft is right here. It comes up to right here. There's a U-joint and it goes into a sprocket right here. Uh, there's a bearing there and a bearing there with a small sprocket on it. And then it comes up and drives this chain to this big sprocket. <clears throat> now this is a C50 brake drum off the rear of a Chevrolet C50. Uh, maybe if I get right down in there, y'all can see the back side of it. But anyway, it's a C50 brake drum. And here's one section of it that is solid mounted to the sprocket that the chain drives to. So this, from that to there, is uh, one solid piece. And then, of course, you got the backing plate for the brake right here okay now when you crank and run the truck the pto is just turning all the time which means this chain is turning and that means that uh excuse me from here to here is just spinning all the time okay now whenever you pull on the lever here which is right here this is the lever uh it runs through a mechanism right down here and goes into our master cylinder and uh, my camera's a little bulky, but hopefully I can get y'all in here to see it. Right there is the brake cylinder. Okay. Uh, and off the brake cylinder, there's this little piece of tubing, this copper tubing. It goes right up here through a swivel fitting. And these swivel fittings are a little getting a little harder to find because it has to work under pressure. In other words, you know uh this shaft is turning that it's connected to right here this shaft is turning all the time uh or excuse me not all the time i'm sorry i told you wrong it turns whenever you actuate the brake handle it locks it locks the uh backing plate up right, right here with the drum and then the whole shaft rotates which right here is your front carrier bearing for your shaft and there's your shaft right there like i say it goes the the brake fluid goes in right here and then there's another brake line it's on the other side but there's a brake line that comes out of the side of the shaft it's right over in there if y'all can see it and it's kind of hard to see i know tell you what i'll just take you around to the other side and show you You should be able to see it right in there, I think. Right here, can y'all see my finger? Uh, right there. It comes out of the shaft right there, and then it circles around in there and goes into the backing plate, which what that does is it actuates the, uh, it locks the brakes up, uh, the drum brakes 
which serve as a clutch more so it basically serves as a clutch and when it locks it up that shaft which goes all the way down the main frame of the loader bed this is your main shaft right here and right up under there is a winch drum that's for your forward loader fork see it right under there and then there comes your shaft down through the middle of the bed and then right back here is your rear winch drum all right you got a cable that runs through here see right here see where your cable comes out it comes through that pulley and it goes up that that loader arm that standard and it goes through another pulley right up there okay and the front does the same thing see that cable under there all right it comes through right here see it and it goes up and there's a pulley right there and there's grease fittings all over this thing okay and then basically your cable's connected to your loader fork there for your front and loader fork there for your rear and i'm going to show y'all in just a minute uh how this thing works but i want to do it all at one time i want to explain to you the side loader first and then i'll let y'all see it in operation so you can get a better idea of what's going on uh there's a brace that goes in between right here it's a piece of two inch schedule 80 pipe it needs to be pretty stout and what that does uh it keeps your loader forks operating together it keeps them coming down together and in the event that a cable failed either front or rear it won't let the loader arm hit the ground it'll just let it go so far and then it'll catch especially it's critical on this front one because if your front cable breaks and your back one is still pulling it'll pitch that log over on top of you if you're standing over here at the truck so with that brace in the middle it'll catch that front arm before it pitches a log over on you and you can at least have enough time to get out the way now i've never known that to be a problem but i can see where this is a good safety deal okay now these are some things i've added to mine this didn't come on the truck i put a piece of i-beam up here on the front and that i-beam helps keep it uh well it just helps keep it from putting so much shock on you on your uh, skid plate there for your brake because you got an h beam here and then you got an i beam there i also added an i beam right here in the center which i don't know that i'm going to leave because it gets awful close to the tires when you're fully loaded i mean if anything i may just cut it off right here you know at the frame i think any bit of extra cushioning you can get is a good thing and speaking of cushioning in between the frame of the truck and the frame of the loader i've got uh one inch white oak uh boards in between it to help cushion it and then of course our loader is mounted with big u-bolts i've got big three quarter inch u-bolts on all the corners uh here's another thing i added these right here which is just a uh, c channel it's upside down c channel i had to notch it out right here for my shaft but basically i put them in there for whenever we go to the mill or when the loader fork sat down on the frame uh they won't get you know hung under the side it kind of gives the loader forks a guide uh because loaders can be rough on a on a log truck uh here's another thing i added this is a step so we can step up onto the log bed that's a mighty handy feature uh here's something else i added i just added a piece of two inch pipe right here to hold my pv uh you know working around the truck you gotta roll logs and and whatnot uh here's a chain box that i added and uh we keep our binder chains and then i've also got a short chain here i'm going to show y'all what that's for in a minute these are our loader extensions we keep them uh, bungee tied right there and those go on the loader to extend it up to where you can throw logs up onto the truck a little higher and speaking of that these extensions right here pegs is what most people call them they're in right here you have to put those in 
uh, whenever you get ready to put your extensions on to keep logs from rolling back off. Now, if you got those extensions, if you got those pegs in and you're empty like I am now and you go to throw a log up there, look, see right there is where your log's gonna sit without extensions. It's gonna hit that peg and you're gonna bend the, the pee out of your pegs the very first round. Uh, now I've replaced these and and we try to take care of them and we try to be easier on our bed. Now I will tell you one thing that I learned from a friend of mine, Mr. Jeff Fergie. Uh, he said back in the day, they used to cut, I think it was like four by sixes or something like that, piece of white oak that would fit down inside of these eight beams. And you just have to get it dimensionally correct to where it would set, you know, an inch above, you know, have it sticking up one inch above this. And you know, you could put one here and then one up here. And what that would do was help cushion it when them logs would fall. Cause y'all, the worst part about this deal is, is whenever you put your first log on, you know, look how far it's gotta fall. You know, it's gotta fall from right up here and hit that bed. So ideally what you wanna do on the first couple, two or three logs, you at least wanna put some small ones, long logs on the bottom, but some smaller diameter longer logs on the bottom and then that way when you come up with some big ones they'll be able to they won't have to fall as far and they'll have something to hit on and roll over uh just to keep from you know tearing your truck up uh now moving on along uh to the dump side now these right here these uh pipes from right here down is connected to the truck and they will they will swing down and they will they will swing forward and aft and out like that. That's so you when you get to the mill, you can take them uh, the top pieces out. And I've got a tab welded on mine right here with a hole. Y'all see that? I've got that welded on there to where whenever I get to the mill, I can I can hook a shackle in that one and a shackle in that one with a piece of short chain in between it. And then I can take one of my binder chains and hook to it and run it out here behind the truck. Because when you dump your logs, you know, these two is gonna slam down. Well, whenever they slam down, your two upper parts is gonna fly out and hit the ground and your logs is gonna roll over on top of them. Okay, so when your log rolls over on top of them, Sometimes you can get them out from under the, the logs real easy just with a PV and then sometimes you can't. But if you got them brackets welded on there and shackles with a chain in it and got your long chain run out behind it, what I do is, is once my logs is off the bed, I just back the log truck up. I hook the front, uh, I've got some, uh, uh, some hooks on the front of the truck. I just hook my chain in one of them hooks and I back out until I get them out from under it. And that works pretty good. Now, one thing I have learned about this, these side loaders, were designed to just use a limb you just use a you know you go go to the woods and cut your limb and stick in there because a lot of times whenever it falls it won't come out and it'll break now on these pipes what i figured out is you can't have a whole lot of engagement down in here you only want about six inches of pipe sticking inside of this one uh and all that really serves is the backstop for your logs to hit whenever you're loading uh as far as the trip mechanism you know it's just got cables uh on the front and the rear and then you've got a hook right here with a main shaft that runs down the side of the truck here's your front cable uh and it's got a hook and these hooks like i say this shaft runs down here and uh, those hooks go together at the same exact time and then up here on the front you've got a handle right here uh, let me get around here where I can show you from this side That handle is locked right there. See that tab how it locks and then it comes all the way down here Whenever you and, and I'm gonna show you all this lock right quick. Let me just walk around here and show you all that so you'll understand that lock It's locked on the driver's side for a reason but basically You take this right here You slide it up and see it comes out and then you can rotate this up like so and it will release that handle over here on this other side and when you do that 
uh and of course you got to have logs on the bed you know you got to have some pressure up against it and you will have if you've got it loaded uh whenever you release that locking mechanism from the driver's side uh it's going to move that tab right there and that handle is going to fly off or not off but it's going it's going to fly down just off of the weight of those logs you don't want to be on this side of the truck when you're dumping i mean you know it's dangerous enough and you don't want to be on this side of the truck when you're dumping but this is a good way uh to you know if you want to go to the mill after hours and we do because i work uh part-time especially during the week and then on saturdays you know i go in the mill on saturdays a lot and nobody nobody's there uh and i don't want to get i don't want the mill owner having to hold somebody over time just to unload us now some mill owners will let you use their loader and unload yourself but then some don't for liability reasons uh and these side loaders with trip standards are a very good addition to being able to get unloaded without uh needing any help another thing you can do is if you get stuck and you've got a big load on you can dump your load off and or get some of your load off because nine times out of ten when you dump it you're only going to lose just about half of your load is going to come off and then the rest of it's going to kind of stay on and you got to take a pv and roll it off just like you would as if you was unloading a log wagon uh same principle uh, but if you got stuck you could drop your offside standards and get yourself out and then once you got yourself out you'd have to reload your load yeah, i mean it would take a lot of time but you could get yourself out of a bind now i want to put this lock back on and after you get your logs loaded and everything uh this lock needs to stay on for sure uh now i do want to talk about the safety aspect of these trip standards y'all notice that i've got two uh five sixteenths binder chains and five sixteenths uh binders the way we bind our load is we go from the truck frame up around this and then up over the load and then around and down to the back of the frame on the front and on the rear so in other words what we've got here is we've captured this and we've captured that and it is tied into the frame and bound down so if something were to happen and the cables were to break or a ear on the shaft were to break or something like that if anything broke with a load the binders is going to hold it and it's not going to let it trip okay and as far as like the engagement of the pipe inside of the pipe uh i haven't found that to be a problem six inches is about right and i trust that schedule lady two and a half inch pipe over a limb okay so now we've covered the dump system pretty good and i'm not going to work that for y'all uh just because i don't have a load on and i can't really show you maybe one of these days i can get a video at the mill of us actually dumping a load of logs off one other thing that this is good for and i know y'all seen me do this uh if you get some logs that the side loader won't load uh you can drop these side standards on this off side you can drop them down you can get you some skid poles and i figure about eight foot is about right it gives you kind of a nice slope down to the ground cut you cut you two eight foot skid poles out of a good stout you know oak or hickory or something like that something pretty stout and you can cross haul them and i've got a video on cross hauling these bigger logs onto the truck y'all can go i'll try to put a description i'll try to put a link to that video in the description so y'all can actually go see that the ones of you that haven't watched it and you can see how that works uh and that's mighty handy now as far as what this loader will load this savannah side loader to in my opinion and i've been around several of these side loaders the savannah loader is one of the better loaders uh mr blondie used more uh up-to-date late model type parts you know better pulleys uh bigger pulleys the winch drums are a little bit bigger uh the pto system is a little bit better design and the brake system works real good uh but basically this side loader will load right around uh 450 to 500 foot poplar is is doable 
and a 500 foot poplar is you know 4500 pounds roughly so you know if you were loading oak or hickory or maple or beech or something like that you're not going to load quite as big of a log as far as uh footage uh because all those logs are heavier but about a 400 foot poplar 4500 pounds a side loader a handle uh when you're loading a real big log you want to get a few you know down in the bottom and you especially want some over on this side uh, because whenever you start to pick that big log up, it'll tilt the truck. So you want some weight over there to kind of act as a counterweight. Uh, the idea behind loading this truck is you want to, like I say, start with long logs on the bottom, put your big logs in the middle, and then you want to top it off on the top with small logs. And you want it to look like a covered wagon. You know, round it over on the top. And you want to try to load from this side back to you. You want to throw the logs over here, work your way back, and then when you get done, you want a covered wagon design up on top. And depending on what kind of logs you're hauling, you know, poplar, basswood, sassafras, uh, cottonwood, pine, you know, you can get a real big load on it. You know, uh, it'll haul 1,500 feet ish, 1,500 ish feet of poplar. Uh, when you're hauling oak on this particular truck, and this is a Chevrolet C70 88 model uh we can get roughly seven tons on it and still be in our uh, weight ratings for our tags the truck will gross a little more than what the tag is rated for but we're staying at twenty six thousand on our tag just because here in tennessee twenty six thousand is a cutoff point for cdl licenses if you go over twenty six thousand pounds you got to have a cdl license if you're hauling commercial now if you're hauling under a farm uh tag you don't have to have it uh, but that can be kind of aggravating sometimes to explain to a trooper or anybody else that wants to know DOT wise if you're hauling logs for hire or if you're hauling logs for yourself uh, That can get to be sort of complicated. So we stay at 26,000. This is a single axle truck uh, 26,000 pounds, which is roughly the truck weighs with the bed and everything on it like we've got it is roughly 13,000 pounds so we can get roughly 13 more thousand and stay at our uh, at our gross for our tag so right at seven tons you know uh the heavier type hardwoods is going to be 14 pounds a foot your lighter uh type hardwoods and lighter wood is going to be around nine to ten pounds a foot so you can do the math on that to figure out how much footage that you think you can haul on a single axle side loader truck uh like i said this is an 88 model chevrolet c70 it's got a five-speed transmission with a 427 big block chevrolet engine uh, it's a tall deck engine and as long as you stay within the ratings of this truck it does pretty good performance wise it, it hauls a load pretty good you're not going to win no races but it's not unheard of to maintain 50 55 which if you've got a big load on it's plenty fast enough in my opinion uh, and you can put near count on about four and a half five miles a gallon you know it's not the most fuel efficient thing out there uh, but it ain't gonna break the bank getting started either you know you could get a single axle diesel truck that would be a whole lot more efficient fuel mileage wise and more power and you could get a little more footage on it but you're gonna have quite a bit more money in them too and you're gonna have to have a way to load them for us this deal here works good uh now getting back to the animal part of it the reason why i think it's designed good for animals is because when them loader arms come down you know you can drive a pair of mules right up here or a pair of horses right up on it and pretty near put the log on the forks you can just about do it uh if you was using a small skitter you would not be able to get close enough to it to really get the log up there at the truck and more than likely if you're a skitter operator you're probably going to have a knuckle boom or some other method of loading your logs anyway uh so with that that's my opinion on side loaders and why they were made for animal loggers because you can get them off you can cross haul you know you don't have to have nobody to help you as far as getting them off you just need to have a good stout peavy and eat your wheaties because some of them logs can be a barrier to roll off but if you park your truck kind of sitting on a on a hill at the mill like that it makes it a lot easier to get that load off okay uh let's see now i've told y'all about the pegs you got to have those pegs whenever you put your extensions on and i'm gonna let the loader arms down here in a minute and show y'all about that 
how they go on and how I've got that rigged. Uh, let's see. I think I've covered just about everything. I'm trying to think right quick. I've told y'all about the winch drums and the shaft in there and how that works. Uh, you need good cables. That's something you need to, you know, take care of. These cables is lifting quite a bit. Uh, I've got uh, 5 8 cables on mine. I think they're rated for like 2,800 pounds each and the loader won't lift uh you know that much weight that much combined weight you you just won't lift that much uh so the cable should last a pretty good while but it can get frayed and you want to you want to look after that now as far as these loader arms here's a mechanical lock right here it works through this spring mechanism uh let me get that chain out of the way so y'all can see it okay and that mechanical lock locks that right there then you've got these chain locks right here it comes around and that locks it right there too you got one on the back and one on the front so that keeps your loader arms up whenever you're not using them now the loader extensions will go right in there in those tubes and i welded them on here a while back but this is the way mr blondie built these things when they first come from the factory that's the way he built them i beefed mine up just a little bit and redone them because they've been bent up over the years uh you know these side loaders get beat up especially if you don't really know how to run them that good uh but i redone mine and i built new extensions y'all saw some of that uh let me take our bungee cord loose here and i'll show y'all what these extensions look like uh see it's got that plate welded on it and out there on the end can y'all see that see how it's kind of curved up that's so a log can sit in it now one thing i've got to do i've got to take a grinder and i've got to grind that down and kind of round it because whenever you try to turn a log on it it will try to crawl up on top of it so me and Skylar are gonna have to we're gonna have to take the grinder and sort of knock that down but i keep my extensions right here just like that and then i take this bungee cord and I just wrap it around there like that and i just kind of got it rigged there uh that's how i keep that i built this little chain box uh it's got expanded metal in the bottom so water can go through and that's where i keep all my chains like I, this is my chain i use for my loader extensions uh for putting my loader extensions on i'm going to show you all that in just a minute i've got two binders a crowbar and two uh, binder chains and over there under all that pile of mess i've got my chain that goes on uh my offside stand pipes uh for whenever i dump at the mill where i told y'all about that okay so the next thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna crank it up and run it and show y'all how it runs and basically right in here there's my pto lever i've already got it pulled up so all i gotta do is uh, crank the truck but to put the pto in gear you just crank the truck up of course it's got to be in neutral crank the truck up mashing the clutch count to about two or three and let the you know let the transmission quit spinning inside and then all you do is pull the control lever out that engages your pto when you let back out on the clutch uh the pto shaft starts turning and the loader comes alive all right i'll try to get some close-up shots for y'all too of uh, everything running and spinning and then once we do that i'm going to run the loader forks up and down and let y'all see that Quick 
especially about these pigs. This is 
show y'all how they go in. See, I've got this piece of pipe slotted and that nut slides right in and that collar keeps it going from going down any further. And then this pin on the backside keeps it from coming out. Then you've got a nice place for your logger sit and a backstop. Alrighty, here's the back one. It looks the same, no difference. Now, like I said, I got a hook right here in the middle and I just dog off to my safety chains up there. It ain't the absolute best way of doing it, I guess, but it works. It works for me anyway. Now. said when you get through you want to have a covered wagon the ot regs state that your outside log touching your your uh, stakes your side standards can't be no higher than the stake half the diameter of the log so your bigger logs you know you kind of want to put them over to the outside especially if you want to build up because you can go half the diameter there then half and half and half and half you know all the way around and you like i say covered wagon that's what you want and once you run these side loaders a while, you can pretty well put the logs about where you want them. Uh, you gotta use that throttle. You gotta use the handbrake. Together, it takes a little practice. Uh, you got a little bit more control with these extensions. You can really you can really throw one with it. You can actually throw it, slap over the truck. Okay, so now I'm gonna lock it in the upright position and show y'all just how much taller it is. your extension on your loader needs to be up above that so you can roll so you can uh get your covered wagon effect if you want to throw it all the way over to the other side because when you release it right here it's going to start going down so where your backstop is needs to be above that peg and uh 
I think I've got mine about eight or ten inches, something like that. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but these extensions work really, really good. They're easy to put on and off. They're not too heavy, and they work really good. I, I like it. It's a good design. Now I'm going to take them off, and we're going to shut the truck off, and that'll conclude the video. And hopefully I've answered a lot of you's questions. I know a lot of you had questions on these side loaders, and hopefully uh, I've answered those questions. I am going to show you all while I've got it running. See how it's rotating in there? Now look at that front piece. See that brake back and it's not rotating. Now when you lock that brake up, it is going to rotate. And that shaft goes through all the way to the back. Whenever you lock that shaft up, it locks those winch drums up and rolls everything together. Okay? Hopefully y'all can make sense of that. conclude our video on our log truck I hope now all of you understand uh, the mechanics and the theories behind these side loaders and there's not very many of them left y'all uh, there's a few here around in Tennessee that are still using side loaders but not very many they are handy uh, they're really handy especially if you need a backup truck uh, we're gonna go to a skid steer eventually one day and when we do I probably would like to go up to you know like a single axle international diesel something with you know it's got a little more power and a little better fuel mileage whatnot but all that costs money too and you got to figure that into your operation but I can promise you one thing this old girl right here she'll probably be a part of Odin's mule logging as long as I am just because it's a it's just a good truck it's 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 simple it's real simple uh, let me see if I missed anything. Uh, something else I want to mention to y'all about side loaders. Uh, there were a few models pertinent to the southeast of the United States. Uh, you had Savannah Side Loader Company, 
which was in Savannah, Tennessee. Uh, you had Corinth loaders, which were made in Corinth, Mississippi. Uh, Taylors, they were made in Mississippi. I'm not sure exactly what town, but they were made down in Mississippi. Uh, and then you had a, Monticell a Monticello loader, which was made in Monticello, Kentucky. Uh, and they were all variants pretty similar to what you see here. You know, some of them might use different pulleys, different thicknesses of metal. The beds might be, you know, heavier duty, whatnot. Uh, most people I've ever talked to about side loaders, I've been around a Taylor a little bit. I've been around a Corinth loader a little bit, and I've been around a Savannah loader a lot. Uh, most people I've talked to that has logged a lot with mules and horses tell me the Savannah loaders are some of the better ones, mainly because of more updated pulleys, bigger pulleys, bigger winch drums, bigger brakes, you know, stuff like that. It'll handle bigger logs and you don't have quite the maintenance on them. Uh, and they made, uh, Savannah I know made side loaders for tandem axle trucks. It was a big, a big side loader and it would, you know, load double ties and 20 foot stuff and stuff like that. Uh, Corinth made some uh, big loaders too for big tandem trucks. Uh, you know, 50 years ago, it wasn't uncommon to see several side loaders running here and there. And my mill guy told me when we first started hauling to him, uh, his dad came out and talked to me. And his dad said, you know, back in the 80s and the 70s, he said it weren't uncommon to have 50 to 60 side loader trucks come into the mill every day. Uh, you know, and it kind of warmed their heart to see us still logging with mules and running side loaders. Uh, but anyway, I want to give you all that little tidbit too. I do believe I've told y'all everything, uh, specifics, specs on the truck. Now, of course, you can put these loaders on just about, about any truck, you know, especially older big two-ton trucks. Uh, you can put them on just about any of them. These old C70s were pretty popular. The C60, C70s, uh, F700 Fords, they were a bunch of them out there. Uh, you know, these old trucks were just workhorses and they'd take a beating, you know. And I'm gonna tell you something, y'all, y'all can tear a truck to pieces. You can tear a truck, slam to pieces with a side loader if you want to. Uh, if you're rough on it and really throw it on there hard and don't really care about what you're doing, you can tear a truck, slam to pieces. You can beat this side loader, slam apart. But if you're easy with it and you take your time and go easy with everything, there's no reason why you can't be productive doing what you're doing. Uh, it's a big help to us. It's really been a big help. Uh, it ain't fast and it ain't pretty, but it gets logs to the mill. And that's what matters. She's putting a little money in the bank for us and we're not breaking the bank in the process of trying to do it. So I think it does pretty good for what it is. And again, at the end of the day, y'all, it's just a side loader. It's nothing fancy. It's nothing glamorous. It's just an old side loader truck still paying its way. And I am forever grateful to it. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And in the future, I hope I can do more videos for y'all like this. I hope y'all enjoy these videos being educational. Uh, I don't guess I'm too much on entertainment. But I want y'all to be able to, you know, see how things were done 40 years ago and can still be done and done in a viable type of way to still make a man a living. You know, a man can take a pair of mules or a pair of horses and if he knows what he's doing, can go to the woods and make a living with an old side loader truck and a pair of mules and you're on your way. Now, are you gonna get rich? No. Are you gonna work hard? Yes. And that's another thing about my videos I try to do, y'all. I try to show y'all the, the whole picture of mule logging, not just the mules, because everybody loves the mules. I do too, I love working the mules, but the mules are a very small part of this operation. You know, we only spend, golly, it's probably less than a quarter of our time skidding timber. The rest of it is cutting timber, uh, bucking timber, uh, Looking at timber, talking to landowners, talking to mill reps, hauling timber, there's a whole lot more to it. Cleaning up, you know, and I want to show y'all the whole aspect and I hope y'all can appreciate that. Anyway, this video is long enough. I appreciate y'all hanging in there with me. Thanks for watching and I appreciate every one of you. Have a good one.